Stave off the shakes. Yeah, you got to. How do you... Oh, go ahead. No, yeah, no, welcome to Political Bedlam. We were uh, sharing a, a private joke from before about uh, alcoholism. It's, uh, it's a funny subject. Alcoholism is just just the tops when it comes to humor. Because yes. it is so definitely depressing, but it just gives you the yucks. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny enough because, I mean, drunk people do funny things. And Until like, they don't. It's weighty enough to where you know it's probably ruining someone's life. So, like, there's some, like, serious yeah. implication to where, like, haha, it's funny, but it's not, like, too funny. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think it's very millennial to laugh at sadness. Yeah, so. oh, it is, it is. Um, anyway. Hello again, everyone. i uh, got some things to talk about today. Only got cast today. Reese is working. i um, going to talk a little bit about Godwin's Law. Going to talk a little bit about all the things that happened surrounding the uh, uh, Russia collusion case, and um, it's going to kind of keep it chill. Cash just started school this week. Uh, Chandler is. Uh, I'm always speaking in third person. Um, I am uh, just wrapping <laughs> up some training. Training? <laughs> yeah. Chandler thinks that Cash is wrong about this. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I am uh, finishing up some uh, training at work. Um, tomorrow will be my birthday. Um, I'm excited about it. I think for my birthday, I'd really like it if just on the show, you would pledge your allegiance to Trump. You know what? I, I, I don't even pledge my allegiance to Trump. I just want to hear you do it. For your birthday, I'll, I'll, I'll do you one better. I'm not going to reveal what it is, but we'll get there at the point in the show. Fantastic. I'm excited. All right. Well, everyone, hope your week was good. We're um, going to, I know we've been talking about it a lot, but I'm going to streamline the process. Tonight, I'm going to get this thing uh, edited and posted tonight. Um, Jeremy is no longer with us. He's going to be, well, he's not dead. I mean, it's not like he was dead. He's stepping away for a couple months. Uh, got some health issues. Been a little sick lately. And um, he's been just really busy. He wants to return soon, though. Um, so that's shout just out to Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Jeremy. Hope you're doing good, buddy. Miss you already. He is a, a good stabilizing force on the podcast. Um, so yeah, now it's just going to be unhinged. Uh, you know, probably a lot of times the audio will just pick back up and Man Cast will be in the middle of an argument because no one was able to tell us to save it. <laughs> so we're just, we're just arguing off air and you'll hear half of it. And that's the good half, we that's, promise. Yeah, that's the good half. And that's all because Jeremy is no longer here. Uh, Jeremy, was uh, he, was our, he was our anchor. He was our wing. No, Jeremy has been essential to the to this maintaining itself because I am not trying at all. I show up and I yell. Jeremy makes it happen. So uh, if you enjoy this, thank Jeremy or someone named Jeremy. They are all they're actually the same. the same person. They are all technically the same person. Um, yeah, Chandler uh, hosts the venue and borrowed some equipment and is recording and editing and is now posting. Jeremy was posting and distributing. Reese is listening and doing quality content. Reese is the one who's been listening and letting me know when curse words are. Um, that's not really going to be a problem with us. I think I cursed once on this podcast yeah. accidentally, and I felt really bad. Like a, I'm pretty sure I edited it out. I might not have edited it out. Uh, I've been pretty lazy lately, but wow. um, we're, getting, we're getting back on it. Wow. Uh, if Just so you know, everyone, that's not the real me. It really isn't. Like uh, I, am, <laughs> I am just a saint on the show. I, uh, there have been times, especially when I get to know, like, the cast have been good friends, where I, I'll just be on certain ca- topics casually profane. And then Cass has never been that. It's it's honestly jarring to hear him swear. That's interesting. I uh, don't consider myself a. Uh, no, prude's not the right word. You're not prude. I mean, no, you're not prude about stuff. You yeah. just don't curse while doing interesting. it. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. You learn new stuff about yourself every day. Everyone should take time to learn to love yourself because at the end of the day, no one else will because you're probably not worth it. And it's easier through the eyes of others, by the way. Just ask, ask other people how they feel about you because you probably have a bad self image. And honestly, you're probably right. Yeah, no, work on yourself. Seriously, you're not, it's not, the things you do, uh, it makes me so angry when people are like, this just, uh, I'm trying to think of one of those memes people share on Facebook that are self-congratulatory for their failures. You don't need that many books, and that's not the same thing I was just talking about, but it's the same kind of person who shares that. You don't, when are you going to read those books? Get a Kindle. Save the space. Go to the library. Support your local library. We like a book a month. A month. Month. You got this. You do it a week. But, yeah. but don't don't talk about I love books. You don't love books. You, you love the words inside the books, and there are better ways to get that than to kill a tree. And I, again, it's not about killing trees. There's plenty of trees if we do it right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I get what you're saying. Well, and also, cracker. to quote uh, Canuck Lobster Man, go clean your room. 
Is <laughs> 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 <It's>, Canuck <laughs> appropriate or is Canuck a slur? Canuck is a slur, but isn't it's like, it? well, they're Canadians, so it's not like... Isn't there a hockey team called the Canucks? Yeah, but I think it's like a slur, like Yankee is a slur. Oh, uh, so like not really. It's not really a slur, yeah. I mean, we could talk about the differences of slurs for different groups of people, but basically, if it's a slur against white people, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, at, at this point. I, and I, was, I could explain that so it doesn't sound like I'm saying something horrible, but I'm not going to. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you do. Um, I'm the one who, who leans right on this podcast, but if you are having trouble understanding that there is a a difference in race relations that has to do with power and that's why slights against white people are deserving of like I guess less criticism of slights against typically underprivileged minorities I mean I don't have the time to explain to you why you're wrong no you've Um, got Google yeah you got Google um and honestly, fellow conservatives, uh, if we're really going to push our cause, we're going to need to find a way to embrace that in a way. Uh, we, we can't be debating that because that's just something that's going to slow us down when we have other implements of our, our policy to implement. And I don't know, but at the end of the day, if, if you're arguing against the whole privilege dynamic, the, the crux of your argument at, at the very end will, will basically be a racist one. So, so don't, don't, don't find yourself there. Just uh, find common ground, and if you really don't want to talk about it, uh, just find a way to kind of acknowledge their point and dismiss it and move on to something else. But, but don't, stop fighting these battles. It doesn't do us any good. It makes it harder for me online. Um, <laughs> just, just get your act together. Um, yeah, conservatives, get your act together. Be better. Yeah, um, talking about Yankees earlier. Uh, another one. I, I, I'm on Yankee. Uh, we were called Doughboys in, in World War Two. Our soldier, our GIs were called Doughboys. That's don't, hysterical. Don't, don't like that one. I don't like Cracker. I don't like Cracker. Either. Cracker because the the I get Cracker. I, 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 I get Cracker, and I I would never. I don't know. It just it it hurts, it is, but it it's also not, fine. It is not as well understood as we would assume it to be, and I think it merits uh, explanation here. It is not in reference to an actual edible cracker, everyone. It is uh, Which I'm eating a box of right now, <laughs> yeah, because it, I am very tired. It, it was a word, and I would say slur, but let's be honest, if you're talking, calling someone who's put you into slavery a bad name, it's probably not a slur. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was what black slaves would call uh, white uh, slave masters when they crack the whip. Yeah, which is horrifying, and I, I don't. And like that's the if that's yeah. if that's the worst thing they're calling you. I mean, you oh, probably got sure. off easy. For you sure, probably got yeah. off easy. Well, yeah, agree, agree. Yeah. Um, well, I'm talking about Doughboys a second ago. I have to go back to find the segue. Um, in a rare, rare um, turn of events today, Chandler caught cast slipping, um, violated Goblin's law, which Cass doesn't really do. Cass is not really a hyperbolic person. Um, we decided to have a more um, broad talk about Goblin's law in general. Um, don't really go into details of what happened today. Um, it's, you, it's too painful. Yeah, usually our uh, our uh, uh, debates and conversations, whether it be online or in person, off mic, are pretty uh, pretty even handed. They're um, pretty. They're they're even handed. They're also heated. They, in the yeah, way that you won't hear on this podcast. Yeah, that's true. That's Make true. no mistake. Me and Chandler do not like each we other as people. We, so. we've, we've, we've You're just, a very good friend. We've, run out, don't like we've run out of other people in our lives because we're <laughs> loud and abrasive and like to drink. And we're off with each other. And that's, that's kind of where Reese is. Um, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. But uh, go ahead and just for the casual uh, listener, go ahead and explain what Godwin's Law is, Cass. Godwin's Law is uh, one of those internet rules that states, and I'm going to read directly. Um, as an online discussion goes longer, the probability of a comparison involving Hitler approaches. Um, and once you hit that point, once you compare something to Hitler, it's impossible to have a conversation anymore because very, very, very few things exist today that are actually comparable to Hitler. Um, now, I think that there are certain things going on right now that warrant comparison. But really, I just want to do <laughs> well. But did, this is a term that got popular during Bush and Obama, and I'm certainly not a Bush fan, and I'm lukewarm on Obama. But neither of them deserve to be compared to Hitler. We live in a different era now. I think you all know where I stand on certain issues. Um, but I think that it's become apparent that maybe we should relax the in, imposing of God's law. 
Yeah, no, that, that's that's an interesting uh, perspective. Uh, the uh, actual creator of Godwin, I don't remember his first name, but whatever Godwin, and he's uh, academic, leans left, said said something, said something similar. Um, I don't know. To me, it is hard to even make Godwin's law esque comparisons, as in not just Hitler, but calling someone a Nazi without the genocide. It, it's it's pretty. Uh, to me, it's, it's pretty tenuous. It's like, okay, well, what are you what are you comparing? Are you, are you saying that people's dislike, people's knee jerk reaction is similar to Nazis? It, it's hard for me to to I guess palette a, a a comparison to Hitler and Nazis when there when there's no there's no murder, there's no government sanctioned genocide. I mean, there's just so many things that to me are just irrevocably tied with the Nazis that it's it's. It's hard for me to understand where you're coming from on that. And that brings us to an interesting point, because I think you're looking at history as a whole, and yes, as of where we are right now, there's nothing even remotely comparable to the horrors that were the Holocaust and the reign of the Third Reich. However, I do think it is appropriate to look at certain things that are happening and draw comparisons to what led to that, those atrocities, whether or not we go that far may very well depend on how we react to them now and the other there's an old saying that we all know uh those who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it so okay so that's a, that sounds a, a lot more nuanced and that, that makes more sense um i guess my whole point is i guess it may it would make more sense if someone said this is this is reminiscent of what the Nazi Germany did in this era of government, or this is what led up to the rise of Hitler, so to speak. But whenever you, whenever, and it's not just you who are guilty of this, but whenever you just say flat out Hitler, or you just say flat out Nazis, I mean, most people don't have the historical context to be able to understand what all the Third Reich was as a government, to know like what comparisons you're making. They just think of genocide. Colloquially, like Nazis and Hitler, like pretty much are, are other words for genocide now. So, so it's, I guess without nuance and without a longer debate, it's it's hard for someone to immediately stomach what you're saying and be able to be like, oh, okay, this is what he's referring to. He's not saying that this is the Holocaust reborn. There are two points you made. Um, the first one I will agree with. Uh, it's impossible to have these long discussions, especially online. These are very complex issues, and to understand them in the scope of history takes a lot of nuance and a lot of time and a lot of patience. However, you also use the word colloquially, colloquial, I can never say this word, colloquialism. It's a good word. It's hard to say. Yeah, that's a beautiful word. And I would push back that... It means through the context of culture, by the way. Correct, like yes. Or, um, there's certain terms that exist through the context of a particular culture. Um, and I would um, push back that people use certain terms as shorthand. For instance, when you call, and this is not what happened on our discussion earlier today, but for instance, if you call a proud boy a Nazi, you're not literally calling them a Nazi, and I think that people understand that. You are saying that this is a group of people who have a racial prejudice that want to impose a particular worldview, and Nazi is shorthand in the lexicon to reach that point. Yes, it's bombastic, but it's also effective, and I would, I would argue it's not effective. I, I would okay, argue okay, so this is interesting. This is where, where the, the... You, you are the not communicating your points, but by, by, by immediately saying a Nazi, you have drawn off, you have cut off all of the points that you're about to make at the head, because the person you're, you're, you just heard that is immediately saying, oh, they're accusing these people of genocide, or they're accusing these people of being like the Nazis from the 40s. And, and if you come at it, and instead, and like you said, we don't always have time to do this, but if you come at it and say, Boom, 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 boom. Here are my points. Here's why I think this. I think that is infinitely more effective than just saying Nazi. I know how, I know it's shorthand, but if we're really shooting for debate over, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the alternative is. Not, I, I kind of lost my train of thought, but if we're, if we're really shooting, <laughs> shooting to actually have an informed debate, if you're actually trying to just actually inform the other side of why you're thinking what you're thinking instead of just, I guess, in contributing to the vitriol out there, um, I would think that it, 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 it'll serve your purpose. And I think that that is a very altruistic way to look at people. I don't think people operate like that. I don't think people have the patience for debate. I don't think people have the people are patience stupid. for nuance. I, I, people are... I'm trying to not be so nihilistic. Uh, two weeks ago, I would have said that people are stupid. Can I say ignorant? Can I agree on that? People are very ignorant. People are extremely ignorant. Um, 
but um, and sometimes this shorthand can make a point to people. I, I mean, this is you know the the show is called Political Bedlam because we we approach things from a right left uh, traditional spectrum, um, which is uh, inherently flawed, by the way. But that's not the point. I'm having a good time. Um, we we see this tool used by both groups, and here's the thing. If someone on the left compares Trump to Hitler, or if someone on the right compares Trump to Hitler, they're not talking to the opposite side. They're talking to their own people. They are creating a sense of urgency. And whether or not that's true or false is, is not the point I'm making right now. The point is... No, it's interesting yeah, context. But yeah, I think... That changes it for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, usually if I say something bombastic, it's not to try to change someone's mind. If I say something bombastic, it's because I want people to be angry. Um, when I do approach someone from the opposite side, and if you listen to the first episode, you know I don't think there's necessarily value in that. But if you do approach someone from the opposite side, you do have to take different metrics into account. Um, so, you know, the very nuance of the way we approach debate or discourse or even team building for lack of a better word is um it's problematic when you compare them to each other drink <clears throat> yes oh yeah i said i said it i said the word uh, i'd like to pause here and just uh, side note um whether uh, Cass is right about this necessarily being productive as a show or not, uh, that could be up for debate. But I do think it, it is very important. Find a friend and, and make them a close friend, someone who does not believe like you do on the other side of the political aisle. I know my conversations with Cass have, have sometimes changed my mind, but also sometimes sharpened my beliefs or uh, ability to defend those beliefs. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just better for... Uh, I guess your your beliefs, like your core, everything is, is sharpened whenever you have someone who believes differently from you and you actually have to be able to defend those or talk those or discuss things critically. And that is 100% true. Um, and don't misunderstand me, there is value in this podcast. I have people talk to me and listen to it and say, I didn't know these things, which shocked me. Um, but uh, there it is. We are informing at least a small number of people about things they don't know about, and that's a good thing. And your point about making... Better, better, being better able to define your own stance and defend it is extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know everything you just said applies to me as well. I know your enemy, so yeah. too. <laughs> and by the way, you have to look at them like <laughs> your enemy the whole time. Like, secretly, the whole time, me and Cash were thinking about how am I going to get this guy? Like, he's pretty, pretty big. Pressure needs to go on his neck. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty big. Uh, whatever. Well, I, mean, I don't know, man. It makes me very, un sidebar, it makes me very uncomfortable to stand next to you. I am not used to being shorter than people. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah how tall are you? Like 6'2", six, 6'2", two, six, six, two, yeah. yeah. I am the height of a normal American tall person. Right, right. And, so, uh, and, and how tall are you? I'm 6'6". I'm, six, six. I'm a 6'7 six, with certain shoes on. I am the height of a, a, a very, I wouldn't say very tall. I'd say that's like 6'8 and up. I'd say Tall, tall. Yeah, you're tall, tall. tall. We yeah. we both shop at Big and Tall. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But, yeah. Can you yeah. imagine those poor saps before Big and Tall was a thing? Oh my gosh, I didn't discover Big and Tall for a long time. Oh my god, what you what did you do? Well, I I I looked just went to stores and hoped. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt terrible about myself, and I went to stores and felt bad. I I uh, recently had a friend teach me how to shop, and it's been a lot better. So uh, everyone needs to find that friend who knows a little bit about fashion and a lot about shopping. If you have a problem with clothes like I do, get with this friend and make them take you. You know. Oh, shout out. Um, big and tall sections can do a lot, but there is a store, and I'm going to go ahead and give just a, a plug, and this is a, a serious plug. Destination XL is a store that I get quite a bit of clothes from. They're great. And they it have is an prices. amazing store. Yeah. Sorry to walk over your No, you're fine. They have like JCPenney-esque It's prices. incredible. It's yeah. incredible. And it's not all flannel. Because normally when you go into a big and tall oh, section, there's just so much flannel. And we are not all lumberjacks. No, yeah, they're not. We're not. not. They're trying to be like, we're just trying to clothe you so we can put the prettier people <laughs> in front and center. We're just trying to cover your parts. But yeah, no, they, uh, Destination XL, uh, good company. Um, Great company. And almo they're almost as good as RC. Almost as good as RC. Well, let's just go ahead and get to the point. Um, uh, what, do you got, what do you got to say about RC? Any more RC experiences? RC, I need to apologize to you. Today I did something nearly unspeakable, and I've done it before, and I've apologized, and you've always taken me back. Today I had a Pepsi. Ooh. I do it about once a year, and I'm not proud of it. It was 
tart and sweet and delicious and then it was just too much and I wish it was an RC and I'm sorry and it won't happen again I'm going to work on myself I'm going to work on us RC so just you could make this easier it. RC by sending us some free products we wouldn't hate it we wouldn't hate it we wouldn't hate it at all I'll buy, I'll buy a mini fridge for this room if, if you send us some products I'll buy a mini fridge and stock it exclusively with Royal Cola can you imagine such a thing? Royal Crown Cola just knocks it out of the park every time. Is it Royal Crown Cola? That's Royal Crown Cola, that's yeah. That's right. I mean, it is a Royal Cola. That's why I didn't correct you, because it is the, it's the Cadillac of Colas. Yeah, yeah. When, when Queen Elizabeth wants to mix something with her whiskey, she, she pulls out a can of this. She does. She does. She gets a bottle of uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label and mixes it with RC Cola because she can afford to. Can afford to. You ever had so you ever had J J W Blue, bro? Oh my gosh, it's, good. it's, it's unbelievable. It's so smart. It's like not it's, even scotch. It's ridiculous. <laughs> John Walker Blue. It's not even scotch. It's not even scotch. scotch. You're uh, drinking gold. Yeah, it's super good. Both monetarily and in quality. Reese so. bought me a Johnny Walker Blue, a small bottle for my birthday, and we drank it together. Reese is always got good scotch. Yeah, no, yeah. Reese is my scotch man. Reese was like back when we were living together. Reese was like the kind of guy who like if you, if you made some good money that week, he would um. He'd go in a movie theater and he'd bring a bottle of Johnny Walker Black and he would just he just watch that entire movie by himself, darn it. And uh, he would come back out and he'd be like, I don't know what I remember from that movie, but I know I had a good time. Well, that is deeply upsetting and I hope he gets the help he needs. Yeah, well, that's free for you. I yeah. mean, it, 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 when you hear that story, though, it does make you kind of want to meet that person, doesn't it? It makes me. I, I, feel, I have met that person and he is a, he is a, he is a delight. He so is a delight. I don't know if he's real anymore. He might have just been an actor because we haven't been on a podcast in weeks. Oh, yeah, he was on one with me. Um, let's see, the last one I did was with you. I think the last two I did was, was with you and then the one before I did with him. Um, he's going to try and come over tomorrow for my birthday for a little bit. If you're free, feel free to come over. We might just uh, have a couple of drinks and record a quick session. I would, I would uh, I'll look into it. Let me know. Remind yeah. me. Bring, bring that over. I'd love to hear him talk. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, Ant-Man. Uh, when we watch Ant-Man again, so we can talk about that. I'd love to hear his opinion. You can um, catch it while it's still in theaters, everybody. A uh, quick question. Um, and this is going to get to another point about what I'm doing in class. Um, what Marvel movie do we have next on the docket? Are we looking at Captain Marvel next? Captain Marvel is next. What and is it? It is, oh gosh, I want to say May. Don't quote me on that. That's but coming up. It's coming up real fast. Really? That um, might be later in the year. Well, because then they got Avengers Infinity War next year. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. The next Marvel movie is Venom. So, um, I'm at MCU, <laughs> yes, now you have to say that. Well, here's the thing it might be MCU. Sony is making it in such a way that it doesn't contradict well, they, anything. They did it with uh, Spider Man, so. Well, they did, they did, but um, Venom looks bad. Yeah, no, it looks bad. It so looks yeah. terrible. Uh, Tom Hardy, this better be good because you have a nearly flawless reputation. So, uh, I mean, I'll still love you if it's bad, but, um, you know, hey. that'd be good. My buddy, uh, Sean, just texted me, and he's in Bangalore, India right now. Oh, incredible. He said, morning, sunshine. I've got to brag on him real quick. I want to uh, maybe have him. He's going to call in tomorrow to talk to me. Uh, probably more recently. We might have him on the podcast if I can figure out how to do it. He is my friend. He, he had some issues. He was like me, kind of, kind of partying, kind of whatnot. And he, He's always, like, I'm not a stupid guy. I'm a pretty bright guy. And then there are people who make me look like a stupid guy. And uh, Sean is one of those people. Sean was the kind of person who would take apart an old computer and then would just take parts from other computers and rebuild it for like no reason. Like I'm talking like like circuit boards, like motherboards. <laughs> like he would like look at a circuit board and be able to like, cut it apart and like, like nerd. Yes, yeah, super nerd. <laughs> but right now he is in uh, Bangalore, India, and he is working on the um, artificial neural network of a platform for self-driving cars. That is terrifying. So to program self-driving cars. They need a developer, like developer platform, to, to, to be able to make it. You know what I mean? To be able to like program all these different kinds of For cars, sure. and to do that, they need to have a uh, an, an engine that um, can basically learn. And he is right now working on the reward center of the like right and wrong part of this artificial brain. So stupid smart guy, kid. I uh, would love to have him on. Uh, I just texted him morning sunshine. Let me see the math on that. He said it's an hour and a half behind. 12 hours. It is 8 o'clock in Bangalore right now. So. Wow. He's doing Spherical good. worlds are weird, man. It is weird. And it, it's super weird. I mean, you go back just 100 years, like, nobody in your town would have a friend in Bangalore, India. And nowadays, like, in your town, it's like, oh, yeah, like, 
one in every five people have a friend that's in another country 12 hours away. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, pick up. We're about, um, how you doing on your drink? Uh, very good. Very good. I could uh, maybe use some more if you're offering. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and pause. Let's, uh, let's drink back up. And um, we'll oh, just so you all can refill at home. Problematic. Problematic. There we go. Uh, we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. We've got more drinks. Um, Meredith is listening in the other room. Shout out to Meredith. Hey, Meredith. She's uh, laughing on the couch. Um, got some big stuff happened today in Washington. And after, like, a lull during the summer, it all seemed to just hit within, like, a 12-hour span. Cass, go ahead and, and take it away with your uh, biased fake news uh, interpretation. Some rich people went to jail for rich people stuff. Well, he's not wrong about that. <laughs> That's kind of, were you expecting that as my answer? No, no not quite. I think you were really launched into the laundry list of things that happened. Uh, um, hashtag ostrich coat. <laughs> I mean, it's just so... I, 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 this is someone else's joke from another podcast. I don't remember where, but credit goes to them. I really... The one thing that gets me through the day that these are the people who are in charge of the country is that this is the only way we're going to make it to a Baz Luhrmann future with a bunch of gaudy gold architecture floating around. So you're an accelerationist. Is that what that's uh, you know what? Right now I am. I, I that's, that. This is all fine. Uh, you know, I mean, with, we're talking about Manafort and Cohen getting indicted for, like I said, rich people stuff. Um, nothing to do with Russia. Um, it's, it doesn't... I mean, we know what we know about Trump. We know he's a criminal. The question is whether or not he'll get caught and whether or not he can even be indicted. Um, so this means nothing to me well, because obviously let's, they're going to... Let's go on the specific charges. Yeah. By the way, I just want to let you know that um, Cass says uh, all this is fine or whatever you just said. I want to go back and play it. That'll be the name of this episode. Oh, this is fine. I'm that dog in the room on fire. Yeah, you are. You are. Yeah. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah, you're going to be that. It's not hot. Darn acceleration. So they're like, oh yeah, we agree with you. Keep doing your vision of the future. Just because we think it will accelerate towards our version of the future. Yeah, I, uh, accelerationists are interesting people. But I ahead. sympathize with them. I kind of feel like that sometimes. But anyway, um, uh, okay. Wait, I know you've been watching the news. There's no way you haven't been keeping up with this. Honestly, this story is kind of just... <sighs> I'll hit on both Cohen and Manafort if you okay, can. Okay, we'll start with Manafort's charges and what he was sentenced with. Um... Let's see here. Um, um, I'm just having to look it up. Cass didn't pay attention this week. No, Cass has been I, so busy with school. <laughs> I'm learning other things like... Cass, if you're not obsessing over over minor headlines that happen every every day... No, and that's the thing, is that these... You're these, wasting your life, bro. These headlines don't do anything for anyone except for the power structure, and not even in a substantial way, like... And news companies. Oh, new, okay, exactly. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, there are so many more important things going on around the world. This is this is important. I don't want to undersell it. This is a big deal. This is Nixon-esque. Um, I don't think so, but we'll get there. Keep going. Um, okay, but it, it doesn't have any effect on anyone's life, and my life will not change from this. Um, so... Anything it may get worse, and we will. Talk, we will. I will mention that to you. People will get a lot poorer. Um, Not even that. Let's just while you're looking this up, if, if Trump gets impeached, who becomes president? Oh yeah, we'll get there. I've got lots. Of, <laughs> we've got lots of feelings on that. Okay, so. Um, uh, oh, Watson liked my picture on your timeline. Charges. Meredith, did you see the picture I posted on a? I, I tagged you on it on Facebook. I will share on the page later, everyone. I, um, I've been doing pictures of my really bald baby from six months next to other bald people. And I decided to do one uh, next to Cass, and I drew in facial hair for her, and it's, uh, it's precious. She looks like a young Trotsky. It's a real good look. <laughs> you didn't think about that, did you? She's not Trotsky. I've brought ice picks near her, and she melts them with her eyes. She's I can't find a list of the charges. That's how... Well, we can't go on with okay. the specifics. But. So, basically, what... Um, he's going to face a trial in D.C. Manafort, we're talking. Yeah, Manafort. Paul Manafort. Um, he's this guy comes he's in a, Virginia, I believe, on eight counts. And uh, tax and bank fraud, um, you know, and uh, next he'll go against the money laundering charges and foreign lobby violations. And that's the interesting one. Um, 
but he was convicted on the eight charges, and uh, it's still going on. And uh, that's uh, that's Manafort. Important little caveat here while he's looking up the others. Um, a lot of times when he's brought up in ties to the Russian collusion, um, this trial, this uh, trial anyway, it was not about Russian collusion. All of Manafort's um, misdeeds took place in Ukraine, where he was a uh, foreign lobbyist. The reason that is brought up in context of the Mueller case is that I guess the hope is that he will be more likely to talk on Trump um, if he is facing uh, charges, which he now is. But I don't know if he really has anything. He was only a campaign manager for about three months. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Well, well I think it's important, important. it's important to point. Let me let me say a minute. Yeah, go, go for a second. Um, these charges, because okay, so everyone talks about Mueller doing this. Mueller, um, and that, uh, that is how it's phonetically pronounced. Mueller, you're right. You're right. Mueller, um, and he is only able to uh, bring charges up against anyone involved in collusion. Now, so far that hasn't happened. Um, not, no one's been convicted on any collusion charges. So in order to do this, he had to get the prosecutors to bring the charges up because they did. this did not fall under his purview. He did, however, discover them while researching collusion. He brought them attention to the prosecutors, and that's how this happened. This couldn't be further from the Russian thing, and so I just I want people to know that this is not a Russia thing. Just like you said, this is... This is rich people problems that, that you and I will never face, hopefully. Oh, don't don't launder money, Chandler, please. Uh, no, I mean, I, you saw that ostrich coat, right? I mean, that's pretty pretty fly. Yeah, um, apparently matching hat. Uh, there's a lot of perks to launder money. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, by the way, all the people that are listening to this in my future mon- money laundering case, uh, I don't care, and I did it. What up? So, um, for Cohen... There are uh, 12 charges, five account of uh, tax fraud, one of uh, making false statements to a financial institution, uh, one of unlawful corporate contributions to the campaign, um, uh, excessive campaign contributions, you only allowed to donate a certain amount, and uh, one count of that, and uh, yeah, he's uh, not a good guy. Um, he's got, f- oh my god, his bail is only $500,000. Cash just said that uh, Cohen's bail is five hundred thousand dollars, and he was shocked. I don't that know if was that little. I don't know if this is still true, but I know that in California, if you set off a nuclear weapon, your bail will be five hundred thousand dollars. That used to be a fact on the law books. So I, I think that's some kind of legal limit: five hundred thousand dollars. That is obscene. I find that disgusting. And we were talking about a guy who made twenty million dollars off consulting fees from AT and T and other places. So, anyway, yeah, rich. Tie t- t- this in with Trump. <laughs> Um, they work for Trump. Trump is a scumbag 80s cartoon of a businessman, so obviously these are the people he hangs around with. Um, I, none of this has surprised me. I think you mean winner Dilbert-esque deity. Um, well, Dilbert-esque, that's true. Have you yeah. heard the stuff about the Dilbert author? Yeah. Of course you have. I had to look up the author of Dilbert. First off, his house is shaped like Dilbert. Um, well, second off, Dogbert, by the way, um, predicted that this was going to happen uh, in the late 80s uh, when he interviewed Russian Dogbert. They had a, a crossover episode with Russian Dogbert and a new Shanka hat came over and talked to regular Dogbert. And he said, uh, so uh, this Donald Trump, he is your god, yes? And regular Dogbert was like, I don't think it's official yet. And that was the end of the comic. Oh my. Yeah, that oh my that god. I have to pull that up. Go ahead. I have to pull that up. I'll pull it up. You talk now. Okay. Um, essentially, um, while we're on the topic, while this on its face looks bad, and of course it is bad, um, it can play out in a multitude of ways for Donald Trump. There are some interesting articles, uh, both the National Examiner and Washington Post on this, both opinion articles uh, from legal contributors. Um, so while uh, Cohen saying that he, he, and what Cass didn't get to and was going to get to, is that what Cohen was talking about is that what they're trying to nail him on is he paid Stormy Daniels and um, what's the other one's name? Karen McDougal, uh, porn stars, uh, to uh, have sex with them. They were marital affairs, and he paid them to cover it up with the National Enquirer and Us Weekly, I think, who bought the stories. He, he paid upwards of $100,000 each to cover these stories up. Uh, apparently a, a fairly common practice among the rich and powerful. 
Um, it's very disgusting. Fairly, oh, absolutely, but it doesn't make the fact that it's not not fairly common. It's among, also not important. That doesn't why. Well, does well the, where the money came from is important. Yes, that's yes, that's what I was getting to. The, the crux of it is a lot of people are alleging, and uh, tr- um, Cohen said through his lawyer Lenny Davis that the money um, came from, um, or at least insinuated. I don't know if he said it on his face that it came from campaign sources. So that is the thing they're trying to tie this to the Trump, that campaign funds were used to cover this up. And uh, that's problematic, drink, in two ways. Um, let me go ahead and take my drink here. Um, first of which, and why these might not actually affect President Trump, um, first off is that to prove that it was in fact a campaign expenditure. Uh, There are specific um, uh, criteria outlined in the uh, election commission. I don't remember here, but there's a specific word, I don't remember it. It has to be like, you have to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was for the election. It was to help fix the election. In this case, it would be to make Trump have a more wholesome image, i.e. someone who doesn't sleep with porn stars. but Trump has a history uh, since about the late 80s of doing this with other people. Um, Trump has buried stories of other um, swimsuit models and pornographic actresses who have come forward and said this about him. Um, so that would look good in his favor if this were to go to court and they were to say, oh, this is be an election. They'd also have to prove that it would be about the election. And uh, there are many reasons why you'd want to bury a story like this, whether it be to protect your reputation, to keep your wife from finding out, Whatever. Um, well, the most disgusting thing about all that, if I may interject for a yeah, second, is that his voters don't care about that. The people who voted for him, well, well, they had to have known this. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, I, don't think all, I don't think all of them. You're fine. Um, <laughs> so we, we'll get to that. And then the, the second point is um, Trump acted through Cohen. At Cohen was a personal lawyer. Cohen was the intermediary. And there is a plausible deniability in that in if Trump said something to the effect of, hey, take care of this Karen McDougal, hey, take care of the Stormy Daniels thing, that would be one thing. Like, that would be one thing that wouldn't necessarily make him legally culpable. Now, if he were to say, hey, take care of this and violate um, campaign finance law, if he were to, in his statements to his lawyer, acknowledge the fact that it was a violation of campaign finance law, then that would actually be a violation of campaign finance law. But if he were to just to say to his lawyer, take care of this, and Michael Cohen decided to take it upon himself to violate um, campaign finance law, then the um, onus would not be on Trump. So basically the two things in both of those points that are going to save Trump are uh, his sweatiness and his <laughs> lack of knowledge about the law. So Here's the real problem in all of this. It's our campaign finance law. None of it makes any sense. It's highly immoral, and it... it and you got well, this. I, I say get rid of campaign finance law. You need public financing. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's where that's where I say get rid of campaign finance law. Just because money's speech, but we, we can we can get there. But yeah, it's 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 that's that's the ultimate crux of all this. And if it gets back to Trump, he can get charged with Cass was just discussing, sorry, audio cut out about how the law on campaign finances is vague at best. Um and part of prosecuting it, the president, rather. Yeah, and prosecuting the president. Part of it is because so much over the years, like Congress and the judicial branch have abdicated their powers to the executive. All of this now falls under Trump. If he, I mean, if he wants to, I mean, uh, ethics, ethics be damned, so to speak. He could fire whoever's looking into him. He could pardon himself. This is all things that the executive branch are capable of doing. Yeah, the system is terribly broken, and he's proving it. It's not what the founders intended, by the way. That has been slowly perverted over the course of the years. A lot of power has been shifted to the executive. And actually, not necessarily any of this, but a lot of it happened under under Obama, who I know you're not a fan of. I like Obama. He's not my ideal. I like Obama. I'm glad he was president. But yeah, no. I mean, the power of the oh, it's okay. okay. The power of the uh, executive branch has always gotten stronger. It's always been more. Um, ever, since ever, no, no uh, president in history has given away any power except you know Washington at the very beginning when he decided not to run, and even that was an empty gesture. He wanted to go back to his farm. He wanted his slaves to bring him things. You know, the founders were not these moral, outstanding people. They were smart, and they knew how to line their pockets. Well, I, I think that's also unfair. A lot of people say that. Now, you got to look at that through the context of the times, man. Um, I, no, I'm not going to do this moral relativism stuff. It's not moral relativism. I mean, um, 
you know, a lot of people, a lot of people who are, are unfairly maligned as racist and slave owners. And then you have, there are people like Thomas Jefferson who, in their writings, discussed a lot about how the slave trade was no. was, was messed okay. up. Okay, actions speak louder than words. Yeah, uh, I, no, I mean, I, I do agree. But I mean, if you if you read their writings, I, I'm not going to say that 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 slavery is right. I'll never say that. But you, it, it's you were coming at it from a position of privilege and hindsight by coming at and saying this is wrong because we because we learned better. You didn't learn better. If you had born at that time, who knows what you would have done. No, you're absolutely right. Here's the thing, because uh, uh, this is an entire episode. Yeah, exactly. Itself. Here's what I'll say. Thomas Jefferson did a lot of outstanding things. He needs to have an asterisk by his name. All right. That's, you know, at the very least, that's that's what, how we have to look at our leaders of the past. I would also like to say, and you might agree with this, we wouldn't have to have an asterisk next to his name if people were better educated. If people knew that, hey, maybe I should mentally put this asterisk next to anyone before the year 1865. Well, no one. I was talking about this the other day with a co-worker, which was a mistake. Never get into conversations with any co-worker about anything. Who was his first name? It's Colin. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. I like Colin. Hi, Colin. Um, but we were talking about... Uh, Elon Musk and I just I'm sick of people talking about how great he is because he's not he's a guy who happened to have a bunch of money and made some good uh, financial decisions he's he's and then Colin didn't think he's a savior to the world that wasn't his position but you see a lot of people who think Elon Musk is going to save the world and I just don't know how they function I, it blows my mind well, but they need a savior they need a savior to the world uh, 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 what were the barrier heroes? You know, I mean, don't don't look up to people as as flawed. Look at them as humans. You're doing them and yourself a disservice. So, you know, what we're talking about Manafort and Cohen. <laughs> uh, got pretty wild enough, right? I'd like to add maybe next week or next podcast we should talk about. You call it more of a relativism. I think that's interesting about just um, looking at people from the past. I, I think that'd be a good thing to talk nearly an entire episode about. And this is the number one argument me and my dad get get into. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, major history buff. Yeah, he he's very much. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to it. Might have to have him call in. I'll have to figure out the call in thing with the switchboard. <laughs> we'll, I won't even tell Cass. We'll just surprise him. Oh God, help me, yeah. please. Problematic. That was for me. Okay, Cass needs a drink. But I'll abide by the rules. I'll take a drink. Um, Gaps, any other thing pop up in the news this week? We've still got a little bit of time to kill. Um, no, the big stories were Manafort and Cohen, and I've been tertiarily interested in those. Um, uh, to me, this doesn't mean anything yet. Okay, we didn't it means pass. a lot. But what were you saying? We didn't get to the order of succession and what will happen if Trump is impeached and then removed from office. Okay, let's go there. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have the position of vice president. That person runs along the ticket of president, and they really don't have a specific job. They are the um, president of the Senate. Head of the Senate. Head of the Senate. They kind of a lot who gets to speak. It's kind of more important people give credit for, but it's still kind of consolation prize. Yeah, they open up the Senate uh, when it begins, and, and um, they sometimes vote for, for tiebreakers. Um, but the big thing that people talk about when we talk about vice presidents is how they are a heartbeat away from the highest office in the land and uh, you know I think um, the last time this was a really big deal was when um, or the last time we all were talking about vice president was uh, McCain. John McCain and Palin because John McCain is um, of advanced age now and he was then he's been very old for a very long time since he was um, born I think yeah essentially he was born a 7 year old man and now he is 186. Yes. So he's aged super fast as well. But um, the cat does have his disclaimer first. And a startling amount of people that I've talked to online, not talked to because I don't want to really associate with these mouth breathers, but um, they think that if this happens, Hillary will become president. And it is a startling number of people uh, in comment sections that would say, oh, okay, Hillary's going to become president. And I just didn't understand that the order of succession was, was a thing. Guys, if, if Trump is impeached and removed from office, Hillary does not become president. That is not how this works. No, no, no. no. Guys, guys, guys. Bernie can still become president. <laughs> Trump's about this to is not Bernie. Yeah, I can't wait till till Bernie... Oh, okay. This is going to sound awful. I can't wait till Bernie Sanders dies. Not because <laughs> I want to die. Articles. Because the articles that, that people post is like, this is how Bernie Sanders can still become president. Bernie Sanders' casket just got lowered into the ground. But here's how Bernie can still win. <laughs> But um, no, uh, if and even if Pence gets you know written up on charges, which I 
and he stays out of the news pretty well. Um, so who knows what he's guilty of. If you guys keep shaking this tree eventually, we'll get to number five, but you're talking about President Mad Dog Mattis, and I don't think he will allow himself to be impeached, so good luck with that one. Well, Mattis is an immortal robot man, so, you know. But, um, yeah, no, Mike Pence will become pet president, and he is a icon in the LGBTQ community. We are all big fans. We think he will do incredible things for our people. He has always shown us support. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm lying. None of that is true. He is a monster. Can, can, can we myth bust for a minute? Because um, yeah. a lot of people and uh, some LGBT friends of mine fairly, fairly have beef with, with Mike Pence. And some of them will, will recognize what I'm about to say, and some of them will argue against it. The electroshock thing is pretty much a myth. Like at this at this point, it was it was dubiously based off of one like one organization that he spoke with, not really endorsed. I mean he. Don't get me wrong, has a bad record with the LGBT community. But the electroshock thing, it, it, it's just overkill. I, I don't think it's accurate. Okay, okay. well, you're explaining the difference that doesn't matter. I, I know, but I mean, that, am, am I wrong in saying that? Do you have any beefs with that? I mean, I mean, he did it. He talked with them. He said it. I, I, you know, whether or not he believes that or not is irrelevant because that's where he stands. I don't think he even said it was a thing. As I, I think it was just an association with a group that, if he had known better, wouldn't have associated with. Uh, but that's not to take away from the the man's um, has a um, what could be referred to in right wing circles as fundamentally religious and in left wing circles as bigoted uh, view towards the LGBT. The community. correct term is bigoted. Yeah. He is a human feces monster, and um, he will do terrible things to the LGBT community. However, if Trump does get impeached, it will be because the Democrats have won the House and the Senate. So don't get your hopes up because I don't think they'll get the Senate. But um, so he won't have very much power. I'm not terrified of a Mike Prince presidency because he's going to confirm Kavanaugh, which I'm fairly excited for. I want someone else, but he's going to be Kavanaugh. No, I mean, enjoy your enjoy your uh, Mad Max future, but um, <laughs> it's going to be great, and you're going to be we're going to be eating you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm uh, you know riddled with disease, so enjoy it mostly in the liver. It, so it will make you stronger. Fun. Um, no, um, Mike Pence is a terrible person, and he um, he's worse than Trump in a lot of ways. He probably won't get us nuked, but, uh, you know, a bunch of gay people will get AIDS, because that's what happened in Illinois, so... Illinois? Uh, not Illinois. Um, Indiana. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Um, I did not know, I did not know it does. Yeah, he implemented some health changes that directly impacted the LGBT community and uh, AIDS there was an outbreak of HIV. And, um, you know, it was one of those things where, like, people say, like, oh, it wasn't about gay people, but it affected gay people. It affected this community specifically. And, and he knew it did, and people told him it did, but he doesn't care because he's a self-righteous monster who looks like uh, John Mahoney. And that's a terrible thing for John Mahoney because John Mahoney was a gay man. So uh, John Mahoney played Frazier's dad. Um, Ooh, yeah, there, there's a little bit of something there. Nice. Yeah. But, yeah, no, Mike Pence is Ooh, a bad person. Okay, man. Um, I'm not afraid if he becomes president, because I don't think he will be. Trump will either resign. I don't think he'll be impeached. I think he'll resign before that happens. If he runs for a second term, he will win. So, you know, hey, we need to vote in, in November in two years, everybody. Yeah, vote red, guys. Crush the blue wave. Um, Coming up on 49 minutes, what's my birthday present, bro? What were we going to say? What were you going to say? Those I don't want to hand out. I know. I would never. Here's the thing about your birthday we present. We know you're not going to believe whatever you're going to say. Here's the thing. I don't believe in handouts, Chandler. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that it? Here, here it is. Here it is, everyone. And, and this is coming from me straight to you. There's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> oh, my God. People have to work for what they earn. And in America, we are all given the same level of opportunity. We are all equal. It is written into the Constitution, a document that has never changed. It has never, at any point, put any people down. Um, and that is because of our founders' great belief in capitalism, a system that wasn't fully developed when they had it, but it's the same as it was then. Wow. So I wish I were birthday every day, because that was the first time you ever spoke since, Cass. You see, here's the thing. People are talking about socialism, and some people are even talking about that nasty communism, but... What we have works. Call them people. I have two. I have a two-bedroom apartment. I have a dog. Capitalism has served me very well. No one else has it worse than me, and everything is.
perfect as far as I can tell from where I'm sitting, so why shake the boat? Why do you want free stuff that you haven't worked for, everybody? I just think you're being selfish, and uh, me and Chandler are appreciate it on this podcast. You need to uh, try harder. Work harder. Get a second job. Get a third job. Borrow money from your parents. They have it. And if they don't, they're lying to you. So, well, you know. That was a uh, that was enlightening. Thank you, Cass. This is the first time you've spoken since, since you've come out of this podcast. And I'm sick of your, your leftist nonsense. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll cut it out. Quite frankly, Chandler, you, you talk about how... Um, privilege exists, and, you know, I don't have any privilege. I worked very hard for my trust fund. So, you know, I don't I don't have a trust fund. I, I, I'm, I'm very offended by this, and I think you really need to change your tune. I think you're right. Well, guys, um, next week, uh, Cass will be Happy on... Happy birthday, Chandler. Cass will be on to debate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, <laughs> Can you event. believe it? And it'll be great. Can you believe it? Yeah. The actual he, self-proclaimed socialist. He, he catcalled her until she uh, decided to come on. Which uh, she found flattering, I'm sure. She did. She did find it flattering. Yeah. So, um, Crazy Eyes Cortez versus uh, Cat, um, Cat, Cass Watland. I don't hate it. Next week. Well, guys, uh, thanks for listening. I'm going to get this edited really quick and put it online so I don't have it hovering over my head. Because, honestly, I mean, i got a lot of this stuff to do, y'all. Um, I'll try and make another episode tomorrow. Reese is coming over. going to have some birthday celebrations. Maybe Cass will stop by if he can. And hopefully we'll uh, have Matt on. We can talk a little bit about our Ant-Man. So, um, appreciate you guys listening, as always. And we'll see you next week. Have a good one.